are flexible filaments. If you've just gotten your first 3D printer, you've probably marveled at the idea of printing flexible items, things that can bend and stretch. Gone out and bought a roll of flexible filament, and then we're devastated to discover that it just didn't print, condemning that roll to the depths of your workshop drawers to be never seen again. However, all is not lost. While 3D printing with flexible materials can be very challenging, especially with some types of extruders, it is possible if you know the tricks. And in this 3D Printing 101, I'm gonna show you how. First, we need a bit of an understanding of just why it is that 3D printing flexible filaments is so difficult in the first place. Your typical FDM 3D printer has an extruder, which pushes material forwards using a feeder gear and the hot end, which then melts this filament to be deposited during the printing process. Now, it may be a Bowdoin style extruder such as the Ultimaker or a direct driven system like in the case of the Prusa i3 Mark II. However, both face similar challenges when printing in flexible filaments. For normal filaments such as PLA, this is fairly straightforward. The material is rigid and once it's fed forwards into the hot end, it can't really deviate anywhere. Worst case, if you can't extrude it fast enough, your feeder gear might struggle to push it forwards, but that's about it. However, flexible filaments are very different. Any resistance between the feeder gear and the hot end will cause the material to flex in the extruder assembly itself. Essentially, it looks for the path of least resistance. This flexing, once it occurs, makes the force out of alignment with the hot end and it will get progressively worse and worse from this point on, usually resulting in the flexible filament spilling out the side of the extruder assembly in fantastic fashion. A good analogy is to think of flexible filament like 3D printing with a wet noodle. So how do we avoid this from happening? There are definitely hardware improvements you can make to 3D printers to support the filament path much better, including purpose-built extruders such as the Flexion. And if you're interested in printing flex filaments a lot, I would definitely look into those. However, for this video, I'll be covering what you can change in your slicer settings to give your flexible prints the best chance of success on stock hardware. So let's start at number one, print speed. Because of their flexible compressive nature, you simply can't run flexible filaments as fast as you would run rigid materials. My rule of thumb is at least half your regular printing speed, however, sometimes even more conservative is wiser. You need to give the material a chance to push forwards and melt at a rate that won't create back pressure and cause the filament to deviate and jam. In my profile, I've set the print speed at 15 millimeters per second, which is very slow. However, a slow print that succeeds is much better than a fast print that fails, in my opinion, when it comes to flexible filaments. Number two is first layer height. Now this one can trip you up if you're not looking for it. Essentially, if your first layer is too close to the printing surface, your extruder will struggle to push material through the nozzle. This creates an increasingly large back pressure in the extruder hot end until the filament flexes in the extruder as it's the path of least resistance and the whole thing just jams up. To avoid this, you wanna make sure your first layer is a good safe distance away from the printing surface and not as close as you might normally have it for printing rigid materials like PLA. I have in my settings for first layer at 100% height and 50% speed and I make up for the fact the nozzle isn't super close to the print surface by increasing my extrusion width to 150% and this seems to work really well on my Prusa i3 Mark II. Number three, disable retraction. Retraction is an extremely useful feature for reducing printing artifacts such as stringing when you're printing in regular plastics like PLA and other rigid materials. So it's highly recommended to have it on normally. However, when printing in flexible materials, it's a very bad idea to have this setting ticked. And it's similar to why we would want to reduce print speed. Retraction would quickly pull and push on the filament, causing it to stretch and compress, greatly increasing our chance of a jam with flexible filaments. Although we've disabled retraction, you can however use coast at end and wipe nozzle to help improve the quality of your prints without running into the jamming issues you would run into with retraction. Number four, increase your extrusion multiplier. Flexible filaments tend to under extrude during the printing process, which can lead to perimeters and the layers of prints not bonding correctly to each other. Increasing a multiplier, in my case, to 1.1 will ensure that the print is bonded together correctly by extruding just a little bit more material at a time. Your results may vary, so feel free to play with this number. Number five, disable supports and raft. Flexible materials are just not designed to work with support material as they will tend to weld to the model itself 
and you have to cut them away instead of being able to break them away with like you would be able to do with traditional supports. Similarly, rafts are a very bad idea for flexible prints as they will also weld to the model, so ensure both of these settings are disabled. A skirt, on the other hand, is not a bad idea as it primes the extruder, ensuring it's ready to go for your crucial first layer. And number six, now this is optional, but if you still encounter issues, consider increasing your printing temperature slightly. Now this comes from personal experience and it will vary on the filament you're using. However, I find for filaments such as Polyflex, I print that at 220 degrees C. Now this is a little bit on the hot side for this type of filament. However, I find that the additional heat ensures the material melts quickly and flows easier out of the hot end. No, you don't need to increase your heat bed temperature at all. In fact, many flexible filaments don't even require a heated bed at all. And our final tip is more to do with the finish of prints. You might have noticed that in getting flexible filaments to work, we have disabled a lot of features that would otherwise improve the finish of your prints, such as retraction and the ability to use support material. Because of this, geometry also plays a very big part in the success of flexible 3D prints. Ideally, you want the extruder to continuously lay down filament without ever needing to jump around at various points of the print. This is because flexible filaments are very stringy. You can see what effect this may have within Simplify 3D's G-Code preview as red lines. This is where the extruder will wrap it between points of a print and while it's not extruding at those times, the filament tends to leave wispy spiderweb-like traces as it oozes slightly between those points. Printing in vase or vase mode or objects that are solid are ideal. However, there's one more trick you definitely need to know about. Under the advanced tab, there is the checkbox to avoid crossing outline for travel movements with a maximum detour factor. This setting is literally magic for making flexible 3D prints look better, effectively routing these rapid movements internally in the print itself rather than externally to the part and hiding all that unsightly stringing. Obviously, longer detours will increase the print time. However, as you can see with this octopus model, the setting will almost completely remove stringing from the model. That difference is definitely worth the slight increase in print time if you ask me. And most importantly, once you're done tweaking the perfect flexible settings for your 3D printer, don't forget to save it. This is really important. I recommend creating an entirely new profile for your machine within Simplify 3D. In this case, the Prusa Mark II Polyflex profile. So I can always go back to it and not worry about trying to remember all the settings I tweaked or affecting my original profile. So there you have it guys, with these tips you should be well on your way to mastering flexible 3D printing filaments, which are one of the most challenging materials you can work with on your 3D printer. Again, these tips are purely on the slicer side and depend heavily on your 3D printer and its extruder design. Some semi-flex materials may be easier to 3D print with and some ultra flexible filaments might still be impossible on your machine, even with these tweaks without additional hardware changes. But if you never try it, you never know. A big thanks to Simplify 3D for sponsoring this episode of 3D Printing 101. And if you're keen to learn more about 3D printing, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future 3D printing tips, tricks, and reviews, and future episodes of 3D Printing 101. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Happy printing. Bye.